you want to see massive wood panels being introduced in the main building industry, it has to really compete against steel and concrete. And in order to do so, you have to develop a system that can compete based on the performance and based on the cost side. And that is the main challenge because um, the established, let's say, floor element as a reinforced concrete uh, has been around for many years and it has been accepted. Um, and the combination of steel and concrete there has been optimized. In order to perform the same way, I think the wood concrete composite element and solution can really be beneficial because especially in a seismic area the composite idea will cut down the dead load and therefore show a better seismic performance of the composite element and um, introducing the timber at the tension cord over steel will allow the Canadians to use their natural resources and to cut down maybe the import of steel materials from other countries of the world. So that technology will utilize your natural material in a better way. By using the timber element as a tension cord in a composite element, you also uh, cut down the construction time because the timber not only provides the tension cord but also the scaffolding and therefore you can pour the concrete on top of that element. When you look at fire and timber you have to distinguish between a small cross-section of timber you have let's say in a match everybody can light a match and a bigger cross-section of timber with a little match you cannot light a block of timber so the key is to have a big solid panel of timber and when you look at a floor element you can design it in a fire situation in two ways either the timber has after let's say two hour fire incident um, remaining cross section because timber burns down in a certain speed it's 0.7 millimeters per minute uh, so in 30 minutes you have about 21 millimeter gone um, so either the concept is you have a bigger cross-section of timber and after a fire incidence you have a remaining cross-section or the other way is you design for the timber to be very narrow and then the timber is just in a fire incident an insulation for the concrete and once the timber is burned away the little bit of rebar you still have left in the concrete will take on the structural performance. We have played with combining wood-wood, combining wood-steel and wood-concrete. Now, when you combine wood-wood in a composite way, it only makes sense if you think about bigger cross-sections. You actually cannot glue it in a job site and bring it on site because of geometrical barriers. Then it makes sense to go wood-wood composite um, in certain applications. The wood steel composite again comes in when you want to take over the structural limitations of steel, let's say in a facade element of the thermal barrier, by introducing a wood steel composite column in that application, you take away the thermal uh, shortcomings of steel and you help out with the benefits of the timber. Therefore, you basically combine the advantages of two materials and you get rid of disadvantages. That's kind of the main concept about composite. And in wood concrete composite, as I said earlier, you need the concrete in order to introduce the mass, the diaphragm, the economics of a floor, and therefore make it in that way a, a beneficial structural element. I showed a bunch of slides where I basically showed the development of the connections in steel design. And there were three steps. First, it kind of was bolted together with rivets. The next step was you weld it. And the welding was a revolution because you could weld in a shop and then just bolt it together on the job site. And the way I look at it is I think those 
glued-in connections can be compared to the welding. And by having bolded connections in steel, we can really compete with steel design.